All right, you guys, play-ins, day one is over. Like I said, I'm gonna be doing updates every single day on these games. Let's start it off with the better game of the day, the Lakers versus the Timberwolves. What an absolute banger of a game. It was kind of a weird game, though, in the sense of like some really consistent and good players played really, really bad. So the Lakers ended up beating the Timberwolves 108 to 102. It actually went to overtime with a little late game drama where the Lakers came back from a 15 point deficit, tied the game up, took the lead, and then. A giant foul at the buzzer on Mike Connolly on the game tying three. Anthony Davis fouled him and actually went to overtime after he made all three free throws. Lakers ended up kind of taking it to him in overtime. They won 10 4 in overtime. So, man, what a weird game. I think the number one thing we can say about this game with the box score pulled up here LeBron James is unreal. I was a LeBron James hater for a long time, but man, he just does it every single night he's on the floor. He was minus 14 on the court tonight, though, which is surprising for a guy that was 30, 10, and 6. So, pretty solid night. He also shot about just under 50%, or actually over 50%. And then Anthony Davis, he had 15 rebounds and 24 points, which was kind of a quiet night for him, to be honest, because the Timberwolves were out all their defensive players. Like, no Rudy, because he punched his teammate. No uh, McDaniels because he broke his wrist. And then no backup center in Naz Reed because he broke his wrist. Or McDaniels broke his hand. But same difference. But the big thing here, the Timberwolves had this in the bag because Mike Connolly came out on fire. Carl Anthony Towns couldn't miss a shot. Prince played very well for him. But the big factor here, Anthony Edwards, who I said yesterday... He is the key. I said we needed a great game from Ant-Man and Carl Anthony Towns. Cat did his job. Do you know who did not do his job? Ant-Man. Anthony Edwards went 3 of 17, 0 for 9 from 3, and only scored 9 points. He did have 3 blocks and 1 steal, and one of the blocks were freaking unreal. So, like, he played the defensive side of the ball, but you, he just you could see... He lost all his confidence. For a guy that plays at a very confident level all the time, he completely lost it, and he went into just, like, only shooting threes. And then he started driving the ball at the end, and he made two shots. And it was like, if he could have done this earlier, this game probably would have been over. But, you know, that's how the ball rolls sometimes. That's playoffs for you. Great game for the Western Conference to start it off. So the Lakers will now go play Memphis Timberwolves have to wait and play the winner of OKC and the Pelicans, which at this point, after that loss, I would almost say the Timberwolves are going to be not favored to win that game. I would say OKC or the Pelicans could probably beat the Timberwolves if, if they don't play better. There's that overall, like Ant-Man can't go out and get nine points. It just, he can't. So the rest of the guys have to play exactly how they play tonight if they want to make any kind of run without missing all those guys. So game two, let's talk about it. The Miami Heat game. This was actually a super fun game for a little bit. It was a really low scoring game to start it off. And then Atlanta caught fire towards the end of the first quarter. Like, I feel like for the first three minutes of the game, there was literally, it was like 2-0. Jimmy Butler, I made like a layup, which... That's about all Jimmy Butler did the rest of the game because if you're on prize picks and you took his taco tonight, he let us down big time. He went 6 of 19 from the field. I watched every second of this game, and he missed legitimately three layups unguarded. Like, Jimmy Buckets was not being Jimmy Buckets tonight. He ended up with 21, which isn't awful. It's nothing like what Cat put up, or not Cat, Anthony Edwards put up tonight. But, man... Very bad game from Jimmy Butler. The legitimately only reason this game stayed somewhat competitive because the Hawks were kind of running away with it for most of the game was Kyle Lowry. Was it like just old man central tonight? Like you had Mike Connolly kind of popping off and then you have Kyle Lowry coming in off the bench. 33 minutes he ended up playing. He went 11 of 16 and shot and scored 33. That's wild. So yeah, the old men were kind of the unsung heroes tonight. So very interesting. Apologize for the doggo barking there. We had to take a little cut there. But, you know, we had 
a pretty competitive game for a little while here. And the big, big difference in this game was rebounding. Like at the end of the day, the Hawks played a very team effort game. Clint Capella had 21 rebounds, only scored four points, but he had 21 rebounds on his own. They out rebounded the Miami Heat 63 rebounds to 39. 63 to 39. Yeah, you're going to lose every single game that that happens. Like the fact that this was still only what, an 11 point game, 116 to 105, kind of unheard of because that's wild. So, what ended up happening was Trey Young got a little hot at one point. He made all his free throws like he normally does. Scored 25. Murray had 18. And then you can kind of just see on the bench here, they got 12, 17, 10, and 14 from the four guys that came off the bench. So they just had an overall, like, really solid game. Sadiq Bay, their pickup at the trade deadline, 17 points. Like, coming off the bench, ended up playing 33 minutes for him. Great pickup for him. Like, I think everyone can say Sadiq Bey has been a like undervalued player for the Pistons. So they brought him in and look at that, already paying off in the playoffs. But other than that, Tyler Hero had a solid game. But really, other than Lowry and Tyler Hero, Jimmy Butler, like I said, had 21 earlier, but like Bam only had 12, Vincent had six, and Struss had three. Like, no one did anything else on the team. It was just completely one sided. So now Miami Heat have to drop down and play in that 9 and 10 seed game, whoever wins that one. So we'll see what ends up happening. I don't know if the Miami Heat bounce back from that. It's really going to rely on if Jimmy Butler can get his confidence back. But like I said in yesterday's video, that this Hawks team, they can beat anyone if they are making their shots. Are they consistent enough to go and win a series? I don't know yet. We, they obviously have the talent. They have all the pieces you want, like John Collins, very solid power forward. Hunter, solid small forward. Capella does everything you want out of a center. Trey Young, that's the big question that we all been wondering. Like, which Trey's going to show up? Is he going to have five turnovers? He did tonight, by the way. Or are you going to let DeMar uh, DeMarco? Javante Murray come out and control the ball a little bit more. Like, Javante is one of the best distributors of the ball and can go out and get a triple-double any night if he wants to. But he's playing to their system, and I personally think they work better when they run it through him more. But the Hawks, at the end of the day, live and die on Trey Young. Will they win a series? I don't know. But that's it, guys. Playing day one was super fun. Great games. And... I think that's what's so good about the play-in. Obviously, like, from a competitive standpoint, like, no one wants to see two-thirds of the league get into the playoffs. But when you get games like these, at least the Lakers game, like, it makes it worth it. Like, who's going to complain about more competitive basketball? So, that's it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Have a great rest of your day, and peace out.